I love Doom. It's one of the first games I played and I still can't get enough of it. For as long as I can remember, I've played Doom and Doom 2, reliving my childhood over and over. I'm going through another one of my Doom phases now and it's been so much fun finally playing all the custom wads I've missed out on. There are some really good ones out there. Today I'm going to talk about one particular map set called No End in Sight, or as I like to call it, Nace. This wad was designed by Natural20, Zazer, and Christopher Lutz who are known for their preference for making Ultimate Doom maps. Zazer was one of the project leaders on Doom the way it did, and Christopher Lutz is the designer of Phobos Anomaly Reborn. But No End in Sight is the brainchild of longtime Doom mapper Emil Brundage, also known as Natural20. No End in Sight is included in the add-ons for the Unity ports of Doom which can be played on the many consoles that version is available on. However, I haven't seen much discussion about No End in Sight, and after completing the game I was very impressed and disappointed that there wasn't much content on here about it. This was designed for Ultimate Doom and follows the episodic structure. There is four 9 level episodes with two bonus maps making this a 38 level megawad. Many people including myself find the Doom 1 formula hard to go back to because there's no double barrel shotgun and no revenant, archvile, pain elemental, hell knight, mancubus, or arachnatron, but no end in sight makes up for it with its incredible maps. The level design here is extremely creative and the secrets are some of the best I've ever seen. There is also no new music in this game, just the tracks in the original which I think is a missed opportunity, but I still love Bobby Prince's original soundtrack and I think No End in Sight makes better use of it than Doom itself did. I just wanted to highlight this game and give it some spotlight since no one else is on YouTube. Now this is all my own opinion and I'm pretty sure many people will strongly dislike the maps I love and love the maps I dislike. That's all good, I love hearing everyone's opinion. Anyway, let's play this shit. Since this is an ultimate Doom Mega Wad, we have four episodes to pick from. Episode 1, 1994 Ways to Die. Right away, I love the names of these episodes and how they have the same blood dripping font as the Nightmare skill level selection. I will be playing on Ultra Violence though. As much as I love a challenge, I am just too chicken for Nightmare. E1M1 Terminal Short and fast like the original E1M1. This map kicks ass and prepares you for what type of levels you'll be in. Just grab the shotgun over here or find a shotgunner and grab his gun. Grab the green armor up here and make sure to track down the secret to get the backpack early, which doubles your ammo capacity. The switch puzzle is kind of a bitch to deal with, but that backpack is totally worth it. This level is an awesome opener otherwise. E1M2, Slime Trails. There are lots of shotgunners here, in crowds, behind corners, and up on ledges trying to cut you down. Lots of damaging toxic waste too, so make good use of those radiation shielding suits. Make sure to get the secret chain gun, because you'll want it for the next map. You'll have to fight off a bunch of monsters to get the blue key, but once you have it, just flip the switch behind this blue door and your path to the exit will rise. E1M3, Logistics Center. This one is fun and tough. The chain gun comes in handy here because it makes this opening fight go much faster. This map has enemies around almost every corner. This room where the blue key is, is very pointless and ugly in my opinion. I don't really think this giant door structure needs to be here. The secrets here are the best yet though. It took me a million years to find the secret exit and the solution was behind the slightly dirty wall in the lift room this whole time. It will lead you to a computer map which, when picked up, will open a secret room where the yellow key was. Going here will lead you to the red key, with which you can open the path to the secret exit. E1M9 Quarantine Silos Antique is pretty creative with the Doom engine here, and I think it works. This map has an interesting way of unleashing monsters and waves. Each one of these slowly descending silos here has a separate height and monsters on top will slowly show up one cluster after another as the silos reach ground level. The keys are heavily trapped in these sewers so make good use of the radiation shielding suits that you can find after clearing some of the silos. This one was really fun and I think it would make a good deathmatch level. E1M4 Abandoned Factory There are a lot of brown wall textures here and it is fairly labyrinthian, but it's otherwise very easy. This fight in the rooms with the toxic waste is very fun and intense, probably my favorite part of the map. This ambush here is a good time to launch a rocket or two for some nice jibbage. Episode 1 will have lots more of this near the end. My first time playing this map I remember wandering around forever trying to find the exit, but it was actually here the whole time and I just passed it by a million times. E1M5 Warehouse This place is full of toxic waste and you'll need to take a dip into it to get the blue key, but with the blue key you can fight your way into the storage area where the red key is. This area is crawling with monsters and using the rocket launcher is pretty fun. If you shoot the barrel that's blocking this platform from rising it will allow you to pass through here and access the secret supercharge. The final room at the end of the red door hallway is a fun ambush which reveals the exit door once the walls open up. E1M6 Power Core 
This level starts off with a rush of hit scanners and demons, but when you clear them out it's pretty straightforward. I love this little nod to E1M4 of Doom with the doors that open together like this. To get the blue key you go to the right from the start and the yellow key is over to the left. After that you can fight your way through this fun arena to reach the red key in a tunnel. From then just pass across the toxic waste to the exit. One of the best maps of episode 1 I think. E1M7, Biosphere. The first map in this wad made by Doom mapping veteran Zazer. This is where I realized that this would be bigger than a Doom the way it did. This map is huge and awesome. To get the blue key super quick, you can just hop into this toxic corridor and run to this switch. Although I took the long way around since I wanted to see this toxic waste filled mountainous terrain of Phobos. Kind of reminds me of a map in Alien Vendetta which I just finished playing. I love the fights that take place in these more open areas outside and inside the building. But the real highlight of Biosphere however, and the highlight of the whole episode really, is the finale where you unleash these giant mobs of imps and hit scanners and demons and just blast them to fucking pieces with the rocket launcher. It's the best shit ever and I always look forward to it. Such a great M7 for this first episode. E1M8, Enigma. I think I read somewhere that this was an unused elevator switch texture in Doom, but I'm not sure. This episode closer is as straightforward as the original E1M8. Just cross this bridge over the toxic waste to reach an arena similar to the one in E1M8 of Doom, but you will fight three barons instead of two. It's much easier to face rocket yourself here than it is in the original, so make sure you keep your distance. I love the shadowy path to the final portal here. It really sets the stage well for the rest of the game. I think this would have been an amazing shareware episode had Nace released in the DOS days. Now before we move on to the next episode, there's one more level I'd like to talk about, simply called E1M0, and it's a warp only map. It's a pretty good one, it starts off completely empty until you reach this dead end, and upon backtracking the walls will lower and reveal all of the monsters. This map has a tech based theme, and it kind of overuses those white and silver textures on the ceiling and floor, but the combat and map layout is actually very enjoyable, I like this one. Episode 2, The Depths of Doom. This wad is structured the same way the original Doom is in that it introduces the Plasma Cannon in Episode 2 and the BFG in Episode 3, as well as the Baron on E1M8, Cyber Demon on E2M8, and Spider Mastermind on E3M8. It also uses almost entirely vanilla textures, but the similarities will erode the further we get into no end in sight. E2M1, Receiving Station. Right off the bat I recognize this from Doom the way it did, which is another great set of maps. This portal was something I clearly remembered from E2M1 of Doom the way it did. This one used to confuse the shit out of me, but it's really simple actually. Just hit the switch over on the other side of the exit door and then run to this portal to grab the blue key and the red key. The blue key will let you exit, but I recommend going through the red door to get the plasma cannon. You gotta fight through an ambush to get there, but it's good to pick up that weapon all the way in map 1. After all that, you can exit. E2M2, Proving Grounds. I really love the atmosphere of this map, it's got great lighting and it's delightfully creepy. You can open random walls here and find some scary hell images behind them. It's where the tech bases start merging into the hell environments and it gets better as the episode goes on. This map has a cool tech base room where the blue key is, but the red key is picked up by entering the lower teleporter in this corner here. After that you can grab the yellow key behind the baron. This lost soul placement in this spot is very dickish and it's meant to fuck you over if you use the rocket launcher so try not to use it here. Once you have all three keys you can just blast your way through to the exit though. E2M3, Contagion Engine. I disliked this one very much when I first played it, but it's grown on me this time around. The opening fight is chaotic and will have you begging for a double barrel as you chop down several cacodemons with the one barrel. The blue key is very easy to find and while you're at it you can grab a berserk and a supercharge in this secret wall. Save some rockets for this room though because two barons will attack you when you flip the switch. I gotta say this part looks awesome. The way the wall just breaks away like a mouth and spits out a fireball at you. The yellow key is accessed by taking a quick dip in the poison and flipping a switch. And once you have the key you can flip the switch behind the blue door to raise the path to the exit. The central pit area with slime is very cool and I love the ledges here with the poison and the blood flowing into them. Fun as hell, but the fake walls in this level with the Baron and the tight corridor really sucks. You can just leave him there though, and I wish I had done that. Definitely a better map than I used to think. E2M4, Derelict Vessel. One of my favorite maps in Nace. Derelict Vessel's atmosphere hits you right away. 
This is a spaceship or a satellite that's been overtaken by demons and turned into a hellish sanctuary. The further down you go into this place, the more horrors you'll uncover. The place goes dark the moment you find the blue key, and on the other side of the door you'll find the crew dead and hanging. Here you can see that there is no surface, so the ship is just floating on its own above Deimos. There's some tough combat here, but it's not as hard as the last map. Remember to get the backpack behind the yellow door though, because I missed it on my first playthrough and didn't find another one for the rest of the episode. However, the real star of the show here is the environment. You can find the locker room, cafeteria, and sleeping quarters of the crew where many have been zombified, and it makes the Doom engine immersive. I don't know about you, but I always loved using my imagination in these types of environments to come up with the lore. As you pass through the red door, the ship starts to slowly give away to its warped hellish reality, and it looks awesome. The floor here in the fire blue room turns into damaging blood when you move forward. The halls will unravel to reveal flesh. Faces and bones appear on the walls. I don't know why, but every map that uses this music tends to be so damn good. The tune is so creepy and is in fact my favorite in Doom 1. It just fits the map's atmosphere so well, and no other song from Doom's soundtrack would have worked here. Derelict Vessel feels like a horror film and it always makes me look around my shoulder. I love it. Fantastic work across the board by Zazer. E2M5, Deep Storage. I love the atmosphere here. It kind of reminds me of Wormhole from TNT Evolution. Here in this UAC storage depot, the power is completely down and none of the switches, lifts, or lights work. You'll have to switch on the breaker in the back to restore power, but doing so will unleash a massive wave of demons, which this invulnerability will come in handy for. As you approach the basement, which is full of sewage, you'll find this door with the blue key behind it, just like close. And then the blue door here shortly after. Getting this key will let you access the red key, which as usual serves as the key to the secret exit. NT gets creative and puts a shootable switch high up and makes you use a baron to guide your auto aim to it. Make sure you budget your radiation suits in this area, because there is not that much for how often you need to spend on damaging floors. Otherwise, this map is great. I love the atmosphere and the secrets. E2M9, Castle of Illusion. And we're back with another take on E2M1 of Doom the Way It Did. At this point I'd seen this map four times because there was a similar version in Doom the Way It Did's Lost episodes, but this time I think it was the best take on that map I'd seen yet, and the most challenging. This is the first time you get to walk outside to this area and it fills with blood the moment you step foot down here. The rest of the map is a more hellish version of E2M1 and it has these super painful floors which you'll need radiation suits for. This map is very stingy with those suits, but the visuals are amazing. In case you don't know, we love our fire blue here on this channel, and this map doesn't disappoint in that department. This room with the shotgunners in the window was the hardest, but all three keys can be picked up super quickly here, and the level can be cleared in just a couple minutes. Not bad. I really hate that the exit is hidden behind a fake wall though. E2M6, Poison Control. The first map in the WAD designed by longtime Doom mapper Christopher Lutz. This map was always a pain in the ass for me to clear. These two identical rooms with the caged imps and the lost souls are extremely annoying and I always lose like 50 health every time I pass through them. I got so lost in this map looking for the blue key in my first playthrough, I didn't think of just riding this lift up another level. <laughs> Make sure to save this armor and berserk because this map gets brutal and you will need them later on. If you want the plasma cannon, you'll have to take a grueling detour for it. This light flickery maze has a switch that raises the path to these crushers that you need to pass and you gotta fight off an ambush in this tiny room. The path you have to take to get the yellow key is much worse though. There are so many deadly enemies in cramped spaces like barons and cacodemons and using rockets is totally out of the question, so save your plasma. Flipping this switch raises the bridge to the exit and I didn't care to get the secret supercharge or mega armor because this map was exhausting. E2M7, Gateway Labs. We're back to the abandoned space stations now. This map is very long and difficult. I love these glass textures here with the UAC logo. I thought these looked really cool the first time I saw them. The walls in the central area will drop down and the area repopulates with enemies each time you return with a new key and it's deadlier each time so always be ready. The keys are granted to you after getting through each hellish part of this building. On one part you'll have to deal with this annoying teleport gimmick with a specter and a baron. I just tripped the line def here and take them out from the safety of this ledge. Then after running through some poison you'll get the yellow key. My favorite part of this map is when you take a trip down to hell to get the red key. I just really like the way this place looks. The blue key is the worst though because you need to know that these are fake walls and I didn't my first time playing. I can forgive putting them in for secrets and stuff but for the only way to beat the map? Not cool. Each time you return to the central area you'll be fighting off these ambushes that keep appearing as more walls drop. 
I recommend just going nuts with the plasma because the next level gives you plenty of ammo. Once you have the last key, you can just skip the last ambush and run for the exit, but I recommend staying and kicking ass because it's fun and this is the last real map of episode 2. E2M8, Rubicon. This is just a battle with the Cyber Demon on a platform arena. Very, very simple and fast. Hitting these switches will grant you goodies like supercharge, backpack, and armor. Other than that, you know the drill. To defeat the Cyber Demon, shoot it until it dies. A great episode overall. The only map I don't enjoy is E2M6, and that might just be because I suck at it. E2 has one of my favorite Doom maps, Derelict Vessel, and I love the space station aesthetic in many of these maps. But this game is just warming up. The next episode is where Nace really starts to take on an identity of its own. Episode 3, Whoa. There is a difference in how you pronounce whoa, but when I say it, I just sound like, Whoa, dude! An old English word that basically means pain, sorrow, and despair. Woe is a badass name for a hell episode, and the visuals here are some of the best. E3M1, Gates of Hades. Alright, welcome to hell. This is an example of the type of maps I really love from this wad. This architecture here is incredible. I just love the way this fortress looks. This episode makes much better use of Doom's hell textures than Doom itself did. This map is extremely short and can be beaten in a minute if you just grab the blue key, hit this switch, and then run to the exit. There's only like 12 monsters here and they pose no threat. The real difficulty just comes from solving the map's mystery, which is entirely optional. This map has so many great secrets to uncover and it's so much fun to stick around and find out what sits in the dark dungeons of this fortress. There are chains of secrets within secrets with some nice rewards at the end. As well as these two horrific beasts created out of doomed environment. Reminds me of the Mouth of Madness from Going Down. You can lower the rocket launcher in the secret room by going onto this ledge from the left and going over to hit this switch. You'll have to deal with two barons when you grab it, so be careful. If you want more rockets, there's a secret room with 15 of them, but you will need to master strafe running because you barely have enough health to cross the lava to reach them and get back out. Make sure to save before attempting this because it will take you many tries. Totally optional though, I really enjoyed this map overall. E3M2, Emblem of Destruction. Damn, there are a lot of teleporters and switches here. I never knew what raises the bridge to the yellow key at first because you're always flipping switches in this map, but it turns out this is the switch that does it. I also just have a bad memory and can never remember which portal takes me to which part of the map. Luckily, it's not too hard to find your way back to this hub though. Getting the chain gun here is tricky because you only get one chance. This wall does not come back down and it will crush you if you're too slow. With the yellow key you can easily access the red key and fight your way through this final room where there's hit scanners and lost souls around every corner. Other than this final room, I didn't care for this one. E3M3, The Grinder. Reminiscent of what would later be seen in Sigil, this map can be very intimidating on first sight, but the second time around I found it much more manageable and fun. When you step into the room with the grinder, this door will slowly start to open. In here you can grab a radiation shielding suit which you will really need to cross the lava section that's full of barons. Save all the medkits here because you will need them to backtrack after grabbing the red key. I like to run past the barons to the outer section of the map where the rocket launcher comes in handy for quickly blasting away these lost souls. Beyond the red door is a tricky section with a narrow path around the grinder, and this fight with the baron in a narrow stairwell is stressful as shit. Try not to face rocket yourself like I did. Once you get the yellow key, the level is pretty much over. This map just kicks ass. E3M4, Fortuna Bridge. There is an intense fight near the start of this map, so grab the plasma cannon and some ammo to take down the barons and cacodemons. This map has two exits, and to enter both of them you'll need the yellow key, which is in this awesome looking fortress. The journey through this place sucks though. You fall in this trap with specters on the way there, and these imps on the fence posts keep respawning. The normal exit will send you to E3M9, considered a normal map in this game, and the secret exit will send you to E3M5, which has two exits, including the one to E3M6, which is the super secret exit. To reach the first secret level, you'll need to flip these switches to make some stairs out of these pillars that will lead you to this wooden room. The secret exit is at the end of this path. E3M5, Forgotten Caverns. Traversing this map is a nightmare, and if you want to get the secret exit, you gotta deal with a shitload of damaging floors. It's also just plain ugly. I'm very glad this map is optional because I genuinely don't enjoy it. Skipping this one will also skip E3M6 though. Fun fact, this map was in the E4M6 slot in the old version of Doom the way it did Lost Episodes, before they replaced it with the Morning Halls in the latest version. 
Talk about an upgrade. I'm so glad they did that because the Morning Halls is a billion times better than this. One thing I like about this map though is that the auto map is a giant lost soul from the side. If you want the BFG, it's in this secret wall in the second fire blue room. You'll need it for the next map. To reach the exit, you need to flip two switches in this cramped maze full of barons to open the path. However, to reach the secret exit, you need to run across this lava. Grab the blue key, go back through the blue door, grab as much health as you can, make sure you left some of that shit around. Then from the blue door, you haul ass through one of these corners where the secret exit will be burning your ass off along the way. There's probably like a radiation suit somewhere nearby, but I looked everywhere and I couldn't find it. E3 M6, Anomaly Retribution. Your reward for nearly burning your ass cheeks off trying to get here. You've been here before and it's still the way you left it. No one is alive and naturally you run to the exit to end the level. But then the floor lowers and you see this. Apparently this is where those demons that killed you in E1 M8 came from and this place is not friendly. This is one of the hardest maps in no end in sight and it's by far the most exhausting. This fucking map. It just goes on forever, and every step is absolutely excruciating. Make sure you quick save a lot here because this map will boil your guts and feed them to you no matter how well you know it. I can't even begin to imagine what a UV Max run of this map would look like. I showed how to get the BFG in E3M5 after going back to record it, but when I was playing for this recording I started with no BFG and had to grab one immediately. The BFG is located in this tower guarded by caged barons and two cyber demons. I didn't bother with the cyber demons until I grabbed the BFG as they're harmless when you're on the tower. To enter the cage with the BFG, you find this secret teleporter and the secret switch on the wall will let you out. And we haven't even gotten started with the actual map yet. This place is packed with hit scanners and barons. There are caco demons and cages shooting at you from every angle in the central area. You're forced to make some insane detours through these monstrous gauntlets to acquire the keys, and every single step through them is pure woe. The first one is the fleshy maze with piles of gore that lead you to switches that you need to activate in order, and the room darkens more and more after each switch. Make sure you have a lot of health coming into this one because this room is so hard and they barely give you any health to begin with. In fact, they barely give you any health at all in this fucking map. Once you have the blue key, you need to reach this tower which has four levels and the only way to climb it is to shoot its eyes out at different heights, which will activate an elevator. You do this by passing through more brutal sub-areas of the map, and the end of which will teleport you to the needed height to raise yourself up the tower even further. This room with the red keys was one of the most infuriating rooms in all of Doom. It made me want to fry my nuts like a pair of eggs. Make sure to get this much needed secret double supercharge and invulnerability at the top of this tower after entering the portal behind the red door. The grand finale is this arena full of fake walls in which a cyber demon appeared and splattered my ass. You'll get the yellow key after this and then you'll be able to exit. Just haul ass the whole way there and hold down the fire button. Don't mind your health, just make it out alive because you'll get plenty of health in the next map. Aw oh man, get me the fuck out of here. This map is pretty epic, but it absolutely overstays its welcome. E3M9, Lake of Fire. It's the secret map from Doom the way it did Episode 3. It's literally the exact same map. I don't remember any differences between the maps in either of the wads. The map isn't bad, but it's really a missed opportunity because I already played it in a different wad and I feel they could have done something more unique with this one. The map resembles Mount Erebus from Doom. It's an island in a lake of lava. It is very easy, all you have to do is grab the blue key in this easy ass room and then grab the yellow key from this room. If you need a health boost, you can enter this room from this tunnel to access a secret supercharge in the caged alcove. Other than that, you can just exit with the yellow key. A good map and very in line with Doom 1. Brings back memories. E3 M7, Netherworld Citadel. One of the two maps from No End in Sight featured on Doom World's 100 most memorable maps list. Netherworld Citadel is a sprawling abyss of green marble and blood carved deep into Hell's surface. This massive fortress is one of the most artistic and creative Doom maps I've ever played. I can't begin to fathom the amount of work spent making this behemoth vanilla compatible. The beauty of Netherworld Citadel is not just in its complexity and architecture, but in how it blends all three of Doom's gameplay elements, combat, exploration, and puzzles, all together so perfectly. If you want to rush your way through this map, all you need is this yellow key. But if you're curious and you dig deep, you will find all kinds of incredible areas. This place feels ancient, and the environments each tell their own story, such as this prison chamber where some prisoners are zombies, others are hanging, and a marine became a lost soul. This horrific diner where bodies are roasting in the fireplace, and you can go down the fireplace. This restroom area is creepy as hell, but the stalls are very amusing to see in the Doom engine. 
Here we can see someone took a normal shit in this stall, but the other two had some serious ass problems. All of this just really gets my imagination going. I've never felt so immersed in a Doom map in this way before, and we haven't even dealt with the other two keys. You can get the blue key easy by running along these pillars, or alternatively by hopping into the lava here. You get an invulnerability and a mega armor along the way. There is one area that sort of acts as a fork in the road. If you fall in this pit in this area, the map will not let you grab the red key anymore. But if you stay on top and keep going into this alcove, you can proceed. The red key requires a massive secret hunt to reach, with each leading to their own amazing sights to see along the way. I love this throne room that just fills up with enemies when you pick up the supercharge, and this little icon of sin which you can actually shoot through to open the way forward. The further you go through this secret path for the red key, the more the citadel's environment changes. You reach the surface and see the sky for the first time in the map. Many of these areas were homages that NT had made to the beginning of the end, his first wad from 1997. By this point, the place feels fucking endless. The outdoor segment culminates with this huge battle against dozens of barons at the gates of the citadel. Then after all that, you grab the red key and face the grand finale of this detour. This battle with a cyber demon in a room full of demons, barons, and other monsters. After all this, you're granted an invulnerability through the red door to easily make it through the cacodemon gauntlet before the exit. There are so many more secrets in this map that I've not only failed to mention here, but have failed to even find. It gives this game a lot of replay value, because I actually want to go back after this review and find all the secrets in Netherworld Citadel. Best map in the WAD so far, and one of my favorite Doom 1 maps of all time. I think it deserves this place on the 100 most memorable maps list. It's definitely a map that I will remember for a long time. E3M8, Requiem. This one is much harder than Dis, since all your cover gets taken away and the only way to get the plasma is to lure the spider out of this chamber, but once you're geared up, it's just a matter of who stays alive the longest. The Berserk is here to boost your health back to 100 if you're low. This episode was amazing, but since this is an ultimate Doom Megawad, we have one episode left. Episode 4, Bloodstained Earth. The first three episodes we've seen so far have been vanilla compatible and can be played from start to finish without any visplane overflow crashes on the original DOS Ultimate Doom executable. However, this fourth episode requires a limit removing port and is several leagues higher in difficulty from what came before. E4M1, Nexus. I think this map is just plain boring and ugly. I don't like the symmetry here and I don't care for any of the fights with the barons and the demons when I want to preserve what ammo I have. Last time I played this episode, I didn't find the backpack ever, the entire time, and I still didn't this time. Maybe there isn't one. There is a stash of health and another bullet stash, each guarded by a baron. I tried to avoid fighting most of the barons here because I don't like slowly bringing them down with bullets, and I want to save as many rockets as I can for the next map. Don't forget the launcher at the end of this dark central hallway. Getting the blue and red keys and flipping a bunch of switches will raise a bunch of bridges to the exit and I just ran for it, grabbing as much ammo as I could find. A memorable map for sure, but not for the best reasons. E4M2, Parallels. This one is awesome but brutal as hell. Another that will have you begging for the double barrel. I like this room that fills up with enemies the moment you hit these switches but it can get overwhelming very fast. I usually just try to grab the blue key and get out but that can get tough with all these specters in the way and the area will be super hard to pass back through in the future. The whole level is packed with enemies that can pick you off from anywhere and it feels like there's nowhere safe. As the name of the level implies there's two parallel worlds and what happens in one will happen in the other. Even if you open a door, the corresponding door will open in the parallel world. One world is a tech base and the other is a hellish image of it. I recommend finding this room early by entering this door in the evil world. There's a plasma cannon here that will come in handy. After hitting these switches to raise these platforms, I recommend raising them in order the other side afterwards because it will allow access to a nice secret portal that warps you out of this hellish, brutal ambush in the tech world. It grants you a shitload of health, armor, and computer map along the way. This invulnerability will make the area a lot easier to deal with too. The secret exit was one of the most well-hidden ones I've ever seen, even by NT standards. I would have never found out how to get to this in a billion years without looking it up. First you need to open the yellow exit door and then run to the teleporter to catch the parallel door in the other world which has the red key. Then you need to open this red door blocked by the barrel. The door will just keep going up and down like this. If you destroy the barrel, the exit will just close and become locked. So just open the door and go through the one in the hellish world to reach the secret exit. This portal will warp you to a third hellish world which looks even more hellish than the previous one. I really like the way this place looks. It's delightfully creepy as usual with NT's excellent environments. 
Here you will fight the Spider Master Mind before you exit to E4's secret map. I think this was such a great map. E4M9, Vile Cross. My first time ever playing this map was during this recording, and I love the scrolling LED UAC signs here. In this map, you raise the platform one level by one by surviving these large fights with Spider Masterminds and the usual enemies constantly teleporting in. The one before the BFG fight was the best of them all, though. A super intense climactic rumble that comes with a nice reward. A decent secret map. Very small, but very fun. E4M3, Square Zero. A quick map, but a tricky one. The red and yellow keys are very close together here and you can grab them both within seconds. And the red door in the main square has the switch that will lower the red bars blocking access to the blue key. There's a cruel fake exit here behind the other red door that will shut off the lights and drop a maze of lost souls on you. The berserk here can always boost your health back if you take serious damage. I like to grab it regardless because this is one of the funnest maps to practice your Tyson skills in. Going through the teleporter behind the yellow door will release a cyber demon and a plasma cannon. The cyber demon is pretty much harmless in this wide open area with lots of cover. I recommend grabbing the secret supercharge and this mega armor to make taking him out a total piece of cake. The exit is guarded by a bunch of hit scanners that you can just easily take out from outside the building. E4M4, War Torn Precinct. This is an intense map which takes place in a ruined and burning city, partially sunken into a lava filled crater. It's crawling with hit scanners here who will Swiss cheese your ass from all directions. The enemies teleport all over the place at random and can disappear and reappear anywhere. I read an interview with NT about this map and he said that this was to make sure there was nowhere safe to hide. The way to access the blue and yellow keys is to run down into these caves and flip switches in these partially sunken buildings. At some point the teleporting enemies on the city walls will be joined by a cyber demon and he can corner you very easily. I made the huge mistake of letting this fucker loose before I grabbed the secret and I really suffered because of this. I lost count of how many times the bastard warped right in front of me and fed me a rocket down my dick hole when I was just trying to platform to this secret. This map looks like it would be very frustrating to do a UV max run of due to this. A lot of times you'll just shoot a rocket at an enemy and then they'll disappear before it hits. And a lot of times you'll just blast yourself in the face because an enemy just appears in front of you. The red key is located in this silo looking thing which you teleport into and then it releases four barons and a shitload of imps. But it's the specters here that will make this a freaking nightmare. Aside from the teleport gimmick though, I do think this map is really, really fun. It reminds me of Lurking Fear from Plutonia 2. It's not as good as that one, but it has a similar feeling of pure chaos, and that grey brick wall texture definitely reminds me of it. E4M5, The Blood Beneath. Chris Lutz's final map in this project is one of the most beautiful maps I've seen. Lots of green marble and good height variation. This place just screams limit removing. I love this room near the beginning with the cyber demon, it's so satisfying when you activate the crusher above him and watch him get squished. I don't even make maps, even though I would love to learn, but these stones here scream this plane crash if this were played in vanilla. There's this room with several branching paths containing the red and yellow keys, and you'll need both of them to progress. I love the underground crypt with the red key, you'll receive the BFG here before this crazy gauntlet in the open area followed by a big fight near the end where you get lots of different supplies to help you survive. One of the best maps in this set, I think. E4M6, Sanctuary of Filth. Oh boy, where do I begin with this one? In playing it and in writing about it. This is the big one. I was anticipating this map since before I even played this wad. Sanctuary of Filth sits at number 60 on Doom World's 100 Most Memorable Maps list, described on there as a combat puzzle par excellence. The ear-shattering roar of all the boss monsters in response to your first gunshot will definitely be a wake-up call for anyone who wasn't prepared for this map. There are 12 cyber demons and 8 spider masterminds here, and to unlock the secret exit, you need to kill them all. This map, being in the E4M6 slot, has a barrier blocking off the secret exit, and it's tied to the life of these 20 boss monsters. The architecture of this sanctuary is breathtaking. It's full of extremely tall walls and towers that you can't even see the tops of making you feel incredibly small and giving the place a very hostile and sickening feeling, which is reinforced by the use of Bobby Prince's E4M6 music, They're Going to Get You. I've said this before, but this is my favorite song in classic Doom. It makes this place feel cold and deeply unsettling quietly humming in the background as you traverse this endless labyrinth of pain. To me this whole map resembles a giant city-like tech base in the style of Black Mesa or Chicago O'Hare, 
but slowly sinking in poison and being taken over by a more hellish reality. The epic final stretch of No End in Sight pretty much spans three maps and it begins right here. On the official Unity ports of Doom, this map was removed and replaced with E4M0, the second secret map, due to how tall the sectors are here. The second secret map is only accessible using Z-Doom, so we're switching to that for now. Make sure to grab one of the many BFGs laying around in this map as soon as possible. Try not to find yourself down on this inner spider mastermind Amrita until you've killed them because they can badly swiss cheese you. It's best to catch them above when their platforms are raised. It's so satisfying to run through them and make all three die with the BFG in like 5 seconds. The two cyber demons guarding the blue key are much harder to deal with though. The best way to kill them I found is to hide while they infight the spider mastermind and then sneak up and BFG their ass cheeks from behind. There are also several strategically placed invulnerabilities which you'll want to make efficient use of if you want to make killing the cyber demons a bit easier. Hunting down all of these boss monsters is incredibly satisfying and once you figure out how to deal with each of them, you'll feel like a titan, just bringing down these huge beasts one after the other. The red key is extremely well hidden, as is the norm with NT's maps, but you'll have to at least take the path leading to it if you want to kill the cyber demon, like way up on this tower. This is definitely the hardest one to kill in the game. The last two cyber demons are guarding the exit and they are also tricky to kill, but I prefer to do it from the exit door itself as there is more cover. I've actually never fully accessed the secret exit here until this recording and it was so fulfilling to finally get that done. Best map and no end in sight and one of my favorite do maps ever. I love everything about this map, the way this poison just flows out under these pillars, the giant outer pit with the incredibly tall vertebrae building, this blue key area with the doppelganger marines on these pillars, and these hidden bloody caverns. There's so much mapping genius here and it makes me want to go back and do speedruns and play it on UV fast or even learn to make my own maps. Sanctuary of Filth is quite a masterpiece and I'm glad I got to experience this one. Excellent work by NT. E4M0, RGC Alpha. If you're using Z-Doom, the secret exit of E4M6 will lead you here. In Chocolate and Crispy Doom, you'll just warp to E4M9 instead. It starts off really chill here and feels like such a break after the pure insanity of the last map. This opening room is pretty cool and has an interesting layout, but once you enter this arena, shit really starts to hit the fan. The further you progress in here, the more the place starts to fill up with enemies. The worst ambush hits when you grab the blue key though. It unleashes a massive mob with all of the Doom 1 enemies. Reaching the exit is a bit of a pain because you need to time this jump perfectly as the lift lowers, otherwise you'll be falling in damaging liquid. This map kicks some ass though. The action is very intense and I enjoyed it. Back at it again at Crispy Doom. E4M7, Vacuum Consortium. Nace's penultimate map saves some of the best visuals for last. After NT showed us how insane of a final map he could make in Sanctuary of Filth, it's Zazer's turn now. This map is an endurance round, beginning here with this courtyard that fills up with enemies. Make sure to avoid the right switch here because it's a trap and it will crush you when you try to approach it. After that, you can enter this warp and begin your descent into madness. This is definitely one of the more exhausting maps in the game, but it doesn't go on nearly as long as E3M6. This map is very linear and it kicked my ass on my first try. The further down you descend into this map's tiers, the more fucked up everything becomes. I love the way some of these rooms look, but holy shit are they punishing. This room where the ground breaks away to show the fire underneath is very cool, but the highlight of this map's visuals is this inverted tower. This part really messed with my head the first time I saw it. At the end you'll be forced to fight two cyber demons in a tiny walled off circular arena. Your worst enemies here will be the lost souls though. Make sure you save some cells before this part because you will certainly die a lot. Using rockets with all the lost souls is completely out of the question. Brilliant visuals here though, I really like this map. E4M8, no end in sight. The final map. This epic collaboration between Zazer and NT closes off this amazing megawad with such a bang. Gear up and run through the portal to fight the spider masterminds. Make sure to restock on health, as you'll be on some lava for a while. Once the ground reveals the way out, go through to face the final challenge, an icon of sin in Doom 1 fashion. There are more than 300 enemies in this map and they will gradually trickle in to mimic the effect of the monster spawner from Doom 2, and it works very well. Before you can do anything, you will need to take out the cyber demon because he will make this nearly impossible. Then you can grab the blue and yellow keys up these lifts and go through the locked doors which will let you open the icon. As it opens, a massive swarm of caco demons will pour out in one last desperate attempt to kill you, so have the BFG ready to drop them. After destroying the icon, the entire fortress collapses and sinks into the fire in a beautiful final scene.
the world is now destroyed and humanity is no more. And since Doom Guy doesn't have anything else to do, he just grabs a computer from one of the tech bases and plays Doom Wads for the rest of time. Hence the name, No End in Sight. That's No End in Sight. I really think this is the best Mega Wad ever made for Doom 1. The clever use of the original monster cast, the well-hidden secrets, the jaw-dropping architecture, the many unforgettable maps, and the final boss, this one just nailed it. No Mega Wad is perfect, of course. There are definitely some maps that I don't care for, but the rest of the game is just so good that I feel like it should be the gold standard example of ultimate Doom mapping. If you're coming from Doom 2 wads like Speed of Doom and Scythe 2, then I doubt Nace will blow your mind, and the Doom 1 formula will probably be hard to go back to, but if I were to recommend one map from this wad, it would be E4M6, Sanctuary of Filth. Though it's several leagues above the rest of the game in difficulty and length, it's without a doubt NT's magnum opus and one of the best maps I've ever played, even including Doom 2 maps. If you want more insight into the history of this wad's development, I highly recommend this interview with the three mappers behind it. I thoroughly enjoyed it myself and will link it in the description. Anyway, that wraps up this review. I hope you enjoyed it. It took me a long time to put this video together, but I've always wanted to review a lesser known game. I really love Nace, and I hope others will give this one a try. Let me know your thoughts about the game. What was your favorite map if you've played it? I would love to hear everyone's opinions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.